We grow up listening to what everyone else tells us about us. You weren't the first one to give you instructions on how to live Kibway's life. Mom did, dad did, auntie did, and it was all based on them. You know what I'm saying? All, all of the people that poured into your poured into your life and gave you like this is how you do this the right way. It was all based on them. It wasn't based on you. It wasn't based on your unique abilities. It wasn't based on your talents. It wasn't based on your character. You didn't know. You didn't even know those things about yourself. You just knew what somebody else told you about you. Empower You podcast is devoted to bringing real world wisdom and encouragement to our listeners, fans, subscribers, and friends. We talk about a multitude of life principles and the process from an economic, societal, and cultural perspective. We believe that in tough conversations and shared wisdom, we can pave the path and leave a ladder for the future. So subscribe to our channel, rate, review, and let us empower you. Welcome to Empower You Podcast. My name is Kibway Cooper. I am super excited to see you guys, to be here with you guys. Um, it's been an interesting summer. I've had some really amazing interviews, a lot of personal growth, uh, and I'm really excited to share that with all of you guys. So uh, we're continuing in our series about empowered investments, and we're trying to analyze all of the different aspects of how you should be investing in yourself in order to create the lifestyle that you want, in order to create um, the success that you want to see uh, in whatever area of your life. And today our topic is uh, um, worthiness and imposter syndrome. Um, and we have a really incredible guest here to talk to us about worthiness and imposter syndrome. Um, and I'm really excited for you guys to 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 meet this gentleman. Um, he has been an absolute game cha game changer in my life, and um, I believe he will be in yours as well. So um, first, I'll tell you a little bit about him, and then we'll bring him on up and get started. So um, the person who is who 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 we have the honor of receiving today um, is a self development expert expert. He is a coach's coach. Uh, he's a speaker, a teacher. Um, he has uh, created over a billion dollars in revenue for his clients, uh, which is insane. Uh, he's a father. He's a brother. He is a son. Uh, he's a mentor to a lot of people. Um, he is a, a, a personal favorite of mine. Um, his name is Andre Gaskin, and uh, I can't wait for you guys to meet him. So I'm going to bring him on up. Hey, man, how you doing? What's good, my guy? What's good? What's good? What's good? Man, listen, it's all you, bro. It's all you. I'm super excited that you're here, man. Super excited that um, you've taken a little bit of time. I know it's you, you got a lot of stuff going on, man. And so I appreciate just the intentionality in which we have gotten here to make this interview happen, man. For sure, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Been looking forward to it. We've been, yeah. uh, <laughs> we've been, we done had this on the ca calendar for like a month now, man. Yes, so sir. It's, to finally it's, be able to it's get been to dancing it. out there. <laughs> so, man, listen, um, you know, obviously me and you have talked a, a few times and we've met and uh, uh, had an opportunity to share um, some of ourselves and our, and our story and everything. Um, but for those who don't know you, um, tell us a little bit about yourself in your own words, the things that you find most impactful <clears throat> about yourself. Uh, for sure. So um, my name is Andre Gaskin, um, affectionately known as the King of Increase. Yeah. Uh, basically what I help uh, coaches, executives and their teams do is navigate their barriers, navigate their roadblocks. Uh, increase their revenue and increase their productivity so they can live an elite life. Wow. Um, you said most interesting about me? Yeah, the things that you find most important about yourself. Uh, I think most important when it comes to doing the work that I do is just living my life out loud. You know what I'm saying? Um, 
I definitely every day in every way make a valiant effort, right? Make a valiant effort to uh, not only impart in people, but make sure what I'm imparting, I am also living in my own life, right? So when I look at Andre in the mirror, what I see, right, and how I describe myself is an basically an adversity management strategist right <laughs> uh, when it when it when, when it when it comes to business uh you you of course know this right but when, when it comes to business uh we, we get really high on like all the accolades and all those different things and uh, most definitely uh we have helped when i say we i'm talking about client attraction university uh i am the co-founder as well as the uh, director of client success at client attraction university and so uh basically what client attraction university is is we we help um, coaches consultants service providers and basically experts uh, attract more qualified clients uh raise their revenue and decrease the amount of hours it takes to make that revenue, right? So we help them make more money in less time, right? And, and what I found from doing that type of work for the last 10 years is that a lot of times um, people come in to learn the marketing strategy, right? To learn the lead generation strategy, to learn um, the Facebook strategy, to learn the business growth strategies. And all of that is fine, right? All of that is fine though, when it's decent and in order, right? And a lot of times we put the cart before the horse, so to speak, because we concern ourselves with the profits. We concern ourselves with the path to get those profits. We concern ourselves with all of these other strategies that we learn about on the internet or we're learning from our mentor, but the most important strategy, the most important skill you can ever build in your life, whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're a high achiever, mom, dad, athlete, whatever the case may be, is the strategy you use in order to navigate the inevitable adversity that is going to come against you as you start to move toward what it is you want and what it is you desire in your life. And I pride myself as that individual that uh, I believe has been called for one particular purpose. And my purpose is solely to help people navigate those adversities, navigate those challenges so that they can show up better in their business. They can show up better in every aspect of their life. And in doing so, they're able to positively impact the people that they are called to serve. And once we do that all together, we uh, end up achieving the goal, which is my main goal in life, is to decrease human suffering while increasing human achievement. And that's how we do it. We do it with a strategy for managing the adversity that we inevitably face in life. That is so good. You said an adversity management specialist. Woo. That's a that's that's good. That's really really good. I think that's one of the the main things that that I have learned um, just in my own journey, um, and then especially since being a, a part of CAU, learning from you and Marquell and the team, um, it's that you know success isn't about you know, how far or fast you go, it's about how many iterations you can survive in order to get it done. Absolutely. It's about, you know, how many times you can be wrong about something till it actually works. And I Absolutely. think the ego, right, that we experience, that we just have in general, is so fragile, we just can't really get past it without someone like yourself who literally takes the time to create strategies that help you overcome that kind of stuff. So Respect, bro. I literally, I mean, you just don't know until you get in it yourself. You know, mm -hmm. what did Mike Tyson say? Everybody has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. 
That's it. That's Bro. it. That's it. Growing up, I, I, my, my dad used to always tell me this story. Uh, <clears throat> you're familiar with Pat Riley? Yeah. Okay, Pat Riley. Uh, famous. One, one thing about coaching for me, right, is it's not just about the title in these business and internet marketing streets, right? Coaching to me is a valuable business and a valuable skill set to have, right? Everybody just can't be a coach, right? And everybody can't be a high caliber coach. That's why it's millions of basketball coaches, football coaches, volleyball coaches, lacrosse coaches. Only uh, only quite a few of them do you know their names, Absolutely. right? O- o- only, yes. only a few of them do you see in the news headlines and all those different things, right? So. Pat Riley, le- legendary coach, tons of rings, won championships as a player, won championships as a coach, won championships as a GM, right? Um, with the Heat, he was instrumental in putting that whole Dwayne Wade, LeBron James, Chris Bosh thing together, um, you know, back in the early 2000s. But anyway, I digress from my point. When he was coaching, at the uh, he did this at the Knicks and he did this at the New, uh, the New York Knicks and the LA Lakers. He showed up the first day of practice. He held a basketball in his hand because he's a basketball coach, right? He's talking to these you know world renowned NBA players. Everybody's the best of the best, right? Best in their high school, best out of college, like and now they're in the NBA. Got them all lined up on the baseline first day of practice there's only one ball he had all of the managers and everything put all the balls away he walked on the court with one ball right and he was like for the rest of this training camp this is the last basketball you'll see and he threw it behind him one of the managers got it and took it back in the locker room so imagine these NBA players that are paid to play basketball come to the gym and the first thing that their coach says on the first day of practice is for the rest of these practices over this off season you will not see that basketball right so they're looking confused and then pat explains why pat said look you all are the best you've been the best you've been the best since middle school you've been the best since high school you've been the best since college You've been playing this game since you were knee high to a duck, right? So one thing that all of us in this building know is you know how to play basketball, right? But are you going to be able to hit the tough shot in the last seconds of the game when everyone on the court is tired? Are you going to have the focus to be able to sit at the free throw line when there's seconds left and you're down by one and hit the two free throws in order for you to win the game? Are you going to be able to go down to the end of the court and make a defensive stop in the last seconds of overtime to seal the deal of a tough game and take the W? Right? He was like, my job is not to teach you how to play basketball because you already know how to play basketball. My goal over this time period that we have in these training sessions is to teach you the endurance to play basketball better when everything is on the line. And that is solely my goal as a coach, right? I already know that everyone that comes to us already has the potential and already has the ability to build a six, seven, eight figure business. They already have the talent, the tools, the intellect to be able to impact people on a high level. They already have everything that they need in order to make all their desires manifest themselves. My role is to teach them the endurance because business is an endurance game. Like you said, it's about how many iterations can you take in order to get to where you are or get to where you're going. The iterations is all about endurance. Are you able to are you able to navigate that illness that someone in your family is having? Are you able to navigate those lean periods when it comes to your revenue and your income? 
Are you, uh, do you have the endurance to be able to manage a team that isn't quite moving the way you may want them to move? Do you have the endurance to and the awareness to manage yourself and take inventory of your own actions and your own challenges and your your own strengths and your own deficits in order to be able to acknowledge those things, repair those things and move in a more focused manner towards your end goal? Business life is all about endurance. And most of us don't have anyone that can teach us that endurance. That's my role. Wow. Food that's good. That's good. You said play better at a higher level when mm-hmm. everything is on the line. When everything is on the line. That's a that's a, a very unique niche, man. Because <laughs> most folks don't get there, bro. Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. and I think that's the the most frustrating part that I see, you know, in myself and others is just that how great we could be, you know. Mm-hmm. And, you know, my my desire is to see it through. Mm-hmm. I just want to see how far it can go. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I came up from, from, from not much. You know, mm-hmm. I had good parents, mm-hmm. but that was about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm like, I, you know, I, I, I just want to see how far it can go. And so right. for me, you know, just reaching a level of understanding like bro it's not about how how smart you are that has mm-hmm. absolutely nothing to do with this mm-hmm. you know that was a real big deal for me cuz i'm like mm-hmm. bro well then you know what the heck it's just like mm-hmm. well how long can you how long can you deal you know how long can you hold your breath as og would say mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. even when things ain't working out the way you want them how how long right. can you stick with it so right. that that's just incredible, man. Um, yeah. I want to jump into some of these questions because me and you can Let's sit here it. and rap for a grip. Let's and, get it. Uh, Let's get so uh, today we're talking about worthiness and imposter syndrome, right? I want to know in your own words, um, how would you describe imposter syndrome? A fallacy. A fallacy. Imposter syndrome in my opinion, is um, something that individuals have created in order for people that um, another label society has created for us to place on ourselves Mm. when we feel inadequate. Mm. Okay. Right? So... Imposter syndrome really isn't a real thing, right? So we sometimes have to, most of the time, we have to separate like the truth from the lies, right? And, you know, reality from false reality, right? And so, and, 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 and so in doing so, we look at, like you said, we look at imposter syndrome and like we think about it right and so mm. a few a, a few months ago i was in a room someone uh asked about imposter syndrome and I, I i basically just presented it like this right have you ever seen a show on tv called uh american greed okay so in the show american greed basically they are it's a show basically about like con artists <laughs> All these people are con artists in one way or another, they're con artists, right? They, a lot of them came from, you know, bad upbringings or had aspirations to, you know, do big things in the world, whatever the case may be. Some of them educated, some of them not educated, all of them able to convince human beings, right? (laughs) That they have the ability to do something that they themselves know they cannot deliver on, right? So a lot of the episodes revolve around individuals like, for instance, someone uh, positioning themselves and presenting themselves as like they're a hedge fund manager, 
right? And these individuals that pose as hedge fund managers um, meet with other people, individuals that are retired, individuals with a lot of money, individuals with high net worth, and basically convince these people to fork over their hundreds of thousands, their 401k, their millions of dollars, whatever the case may be, and promise them that they can get them a higher return on their investment than some of the other competitors in the market, right? This is just an example. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, these individuals <laughs> know that they can't deliver on what they're promising. So they take all these people's money and then they basically, you know, live their best lives for until they get caught because they all get caught, right? So basically that is a fraud. And an individual that is uh, participating in a fraud is an imposter, right? When it comes to imposter syndrome, the reason that imposters are, are the reason imposter syndrome is a fallacy is because imposters present as some of the most confident and competent people you will ever meet in your life, right? They're, they're, they're very charming. They're able to convince you. They're able to make you comfortable. They're able to build a relationship with you. And on the surface, you would never know that everything they're saying to you is a complete lie. So what I'm saying to you is in order to be like real imposters, imposter syndrome sounds cute, right? But real imposters operate with the utmost confidence because you got to have a lot of confidence to be able to promise somebody something that you know you cannot deliver on, right? So imposter syndrome is a fallacy. When people say, oh, I'm, I'm suffering from imposter syndrome, you're not suffering from imposter syndrome. You're experiencing what you see as your own inadequacies, right? So the shift has to be made from giving yourself a label to finding the leverage necessary in order to uh, overcome those inadequacies, right? How do we do that? We look at what we think we are, the places we think we are inadequate, right? Some of us feel like, some brothers that may be listening to my voice may feel like inadequate fathers. You ain't gotta tell nobody, bro. I know too, I'm a dad and I done been there. I've, I've been in places where I felt like, knew that I wasn't doing what I should be doing as a father. That didn't make me an imposter. I wasn't posing as a father. I was still being a father. I was still attempting to be more present. I was still attempting to generate the funds to take care of my kids. There was a time where I was $14,000 in arrears and child support, right? But that was because what, what, what I knew I needed to do just wasn't happening fast enough. I was giving up on myself. I was doubting myself. I was seeing myself as an imposter, right? Not knowing that I'm moving in this every day, right? Yeah. The, 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 but the shift comes when you start to see what you may be inadequate in, right? Address those things by looking at, okay, this is where I'm falling short. This may be a weakness for me. How do I strengthen my weakness, right? Yeah. What do I do? What are the things that I do in order to become a better father? Well, first I start with presence, right? How do I, how do I begin to be more present in my children's lives, right? Why well, do that by earning more? If I can earn more, if I can earn more money, that can help me create more time. And if I have more time, then I can be more present, right? So what do I have to do to position myself to be a better earner in my life, right? What do I need to do in order to, um, you know, make sure that I can get to South Carolina when my child is having a basketball game? Right. Or make sure that I'm available in Jacksonville 
where my son wants to go to Boy Scout. So whatever the case may be, right? It's all about being able to, number one, understand that what we identify as imposter syndrome is a complete lie. When we hear imposter syndrome, the one thing you should think about, okay, I'm experiencing some level of inadequacy in my life, right? And then you address that inadequacy and then you map out a plan to be able to elevate your inadequacies. Because just, just because you're inadequate on Monday doesn't mean mm. that Monday of the next month you still have to be inadequate in that area, right? Whatever we send energy towards, whatever we send effort towards, typically improves. We just need to do that more consistently. Oof, that's so, 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 so good. You said imposters are generally incredibly confident. and so, Incredibly confident. Yeah, yeah. Incredibly that's, confident. That's so good. Um, like, even, though, even, even in your life, you probably know some people that are like habitual liars. Yeah. Right? And they know they're lying. The moment a word comes out of their mouth, they know they're lying and you know they're lying. Yep. Right? However, they can spew that lie out with the most confidence. And I'm not, I'm not like crowning imposters, right? <laughs> I'm not crowning, like I'm not crowning habitual liars, right? But what I'm saying is we we need to be able. One of the most important things you can do in life is learn the skill of making this the distinctions, right? Being able to distinguish one thing from another, right? And that's what we're doing when it comes to imposter syndrome. It's making a distinction. What is it actually and how does it show up in life, right? Yeah. And then once you determine what it is and what and, and how it shows up in life or how it shows up in society, then you can make the decision on, on whether you're going to apply that to yourself or not. Right. Ooh, so I would rather heavy. not label myself with something that I know is inaccurate. Yeah. Right. Yeah. People shouldn't even want to fix their mouths to say, well, I'm kind of suffering with some imposter syndrome. What? You're making yourself equal to an imposter, Ooh. right? You're making yourself equal to somebody that is not competent. You're making yourself equal to somebody that is tr that that basically tricks people in order to get ahead. Why would you do that to yourself? You with all the education, right? You with all the knowledge, you with all the intellect, you with all of the things that you've achieved, all the things you've overcome, all the things that you've been able to um, experience in your life and become a better person for it, no matter what the circumstance, no matter what the situation, no matter how down and out you felt like you were, all of us made it through those moments and are better for them. Not only are we better for them, but we're more prepared for the next season of adversity, the next season of uh, unforeseen circumstances, the next season of undesirable consequences. And guess what? You're going to get through those too. But why are you going to get through them? You're going to get through them because you're worthy of that, right? Imposters never look at their worthiness because they're entitled. <laughs> wow. Wow. Wow, man. You say, you said the biggest thing you can do is learn how to create distinction. You know, and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but when I hear you say that, I mean, to really look at the complete picture of who you are versus the complete picture of who maybe your mind or your circumstance is telling you is real, right? Because you could be broke right now, but have a million dollar skill set. You mm -hmm. could be um, super educated right now, but you in between jobs. And so you can't mm -hmm. really utilize some of that education that you have. You could mm -hmm. have just been a CEO and the company folded, not necessarily your fault, 
doesn't make right. you you know what i'm saying so distinguishing right. distinguishing what is actually happening and mm-hmm. i think when you think about learning how to distinguish the aspects of your life mm-hmm. i think your self talk is very very important because One if you are yeah so 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 my question for you is like how do you or how have you built up a strong um self dialogue right we I, it's even a trendy thing um mm-hmm. to like talk down about yourself thank you for listening to empower you podcast i just wanted to take a second and tell you about a brand new podcast on the creative podcast network the guru guide to podcasting podcast is for coaches consultants uh, service-based businesses that are looking to beat the social media algorithms uh, create more revenue in their business and an audience of their ideal clients so that they can have more valuable conversations impact more businesses more clients and ultimately create more income and more free freedom in their business. So if that's you and you're looking to build an audience of your ideal clients, you're looking to take back your time in your business, in your life, and uh, generate more income while doing it, you can start your very own profitable business podcast and we'll show you exactly how to do it. So click the link and visit the Guru Guide to Podcasting podcast and we'll talk to you when you get there. Okay, back to the episode. You know, um, if you scroll through Instagram and things, you'll hear like these different reels and things, and they'll have different audio that is very demeaning. And it's obviously, you know, people are making it funny, but I'm thinking like, I'm not about to say that about myself. You know what I mean? But I think because we're so used to talking down to ourselves, we open up a door for so many other things to be possible, even if they aren't true. So, how are you able to create such a strong self dialogue and what did that look like before you got here what were some of those steps that you were taking before you got here because you talked about when you were um you know uh, ch- having challenges with child support and things like that mm-hmm. it wasn't because you weren't doing those things it was just mm-hmm. they weren't they weren't happening fast enough that's a mm-hmm. super difficult place to be Mm -hmm. because you know you are occupying but that harvest hasn't come yet Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so what are you telling yourself in those moments that Mm -hmm. gets you here to Mm -hmm. a billion dollars worth of increase the king of increase uh, able to help people create strategies for adversity how Mm -hmm. does that shift happen consistently (laughs) daily right um and you, you already know this, bro, but by no stretch of the imagination am I the guy that has it all figured out, right? By no stretch of the imagination <laughs> am I the guy that um, doesn't slip up, right? By no stretch of the imagination uh, am I the guy that has all the answers, right? But one thing that I do have And one thing that we all have, right, is the ability to be able to do a thing consistently, right? In every aspect of our lives, well, not in every aspect of our lives. Well, yes, in every aspect of our lives, if you look at it, there is something that you've been doing or something that you learned to do that now you do every day almost without thinking about it right um it's safe to say that young kid way maybe two years old three years old wasn't very good at brushing his teeth is that is that safe to say that's very safe to say absolutely Like, like you know mom and dad whoever was watching you right will pull up in the bathroom and help you make sure you got everything you <laughs> yep. know what i'm saying it, don't don't <laughs> just chew on the toothbrush don't just try to eat the toothpaste but like you gotta actually brush your teeth right right, right. And, and you gotta get the sides you gotta get the back behind the teeth you gotta get that tongue or your breath is gonna stink you know what i'm saying right like you didn't do that very well at first but 30-year-old, whoa, how old are you now, Kimway? 31. 31, that's right. 
31 year old kid weigh, and I'm just guessing, is probably a much better toothbrusher than three year old kid weight. Is that safe to say? <laughs> That's safe to say, absolutely. And you do and you do it automatically without thinking about it. Yeah. Right? There probably was a time, and I'm just I'm just throwing it out there. I could be wrong. But there probably was there probably was a time in your life where you weren't a great walker, like walker. You weren't a great walker. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't there, but I can imagine that you would, you know, pull up on the table in the living room, take a few <laughs> steps, fall on your butt, right? Quite likely. Weren't, ve- weren't very good at it, right? Yeah. But the more you started to pull up. Right. The more you started to take those few steps, two turned into four steps, four steps turned into 10 steps. And before you know it, and we do this before, you know, it, you were walking so good that you immediately started to run. Every right. Balance (laughs) got better. Right. You're able to turn on a dime. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I imagine that 31 year old kid way probably walks a whole lot better than one and a half year old kid weight. Is that is that safe to say? A thousand percent, yes sir. Why does why does 31 year old kid weight walk better than one year old kid weight? Taking a lot of steps. You've been walking, you've been practicing walking yeah. for 30 years. Yeah. So to answer your question, like when it comes to my self-talk, right? I've been curating my self-talk over the last 37 years, right? When I was first learned to talk to myself or go inward, who did I learn that from? I learned that from my parents. I learned that from the, the people around me. We all are products of our environment and certain things that we're told, we tend to internalize, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's why that's why one thing that I can't stand is I don't like to hear adults call children bad, especially call children bad in front of the children. Oh, you being so bad right now because that that impresses upon the child that they are bad, right? And now that is going to start to enter into their self dialogue, right? Um, sometimes we have situations where, uh, you know, we, we may not have great relationships with our children's, you know, the other parent, right? We're not very good co-parents and the children may do things to remind us of that other parent. (laughs) And you'd be like, oh, you just like your mom or you just like your dad. And and they hear you talk crazy about their mama or their daddy all the time. Right. So now that enters into the self dialogue. And then what we have to do as adults is we have to shift. We have to have a shift and an elevation of our thought process to where we throw out what everyone else has said about us that impacts our self dialogue and start to look at ourselves and figure out what do we have to say to ourselves about ourselves. Right? That's big. So my self-dialogue and improving my self-dialogue again, it's a daily process. I'm committed, addicted to improvement. Not only for myself, but for my children, for my family, for my clients, right? And how do you do how do you improve your self-conversations, your self-dialogue? You do it daily. Address the things that you say to yourself that don't empower you. Mm. right address this like many of us have gotten up one morning and the moment we get up on the way to the bathroom we say this is not going to be a good day right or throughout the day right you got a little bit of of a you know your energy has already spiked and now it's kind (laughs) of like crashing that happens, right? Yeah. Your energy, especially for us high achievers, right? We, we, we spike yeah. and then our energy just gets low and we mess around and say something like, I'm tired, I'm exhausted, right? Yeah. That's negative self-talk because what you think about and speak about, you bring about. 
And so if you constantly talk about not having the money, right? If you constantly talk about not having the skill set, if you constantly focus on your lack or the deficits that you experience in life, you will continue to experience those lacks and those deficits. But if you make a decision to think just a little bit longer about those lacks in those deficits and you learn to look at them from a different perspective because everything everything has a different perspective right and so i choose to just look at i choose to take the time to turn things into a different perspective when things make me mad i try to take the time i make an attempt to take the time to think about what was my role in it. Mm. So now I'm not mad at the other person. Mm -hmm. I can start to internalize and start to figure Mm -hmm. out, okay, Dre, what did you do wrong there and how can you improve that? Do you improve that by not talking to that person and separating yourself from them? Do you improve that by having a conversation with them? Do you improve that by stepping your own game up when it comes to dealing with people overall, right? internalize because once you internalize and you make the corrections inward you can then have way more impact outward right the world responds to you differently that's that's really really good oh man you said so many things bro that that i want to like dive into i'm going to try to pick the one that i think makes the most sense Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You talk about self-talk mm-hmm. um, as being a daily exercise, okay. e- even to the point in which you're not proclaiming upon yourself that you are exhausted mm-hmm. or you mm-hmm. are tired mm-hmm. or whatever. I say both of those things a lot, mm-hmm. especially mm-hmm. in this last week. I've been like, yo, <laughs> your boy's whooped right now. <laughs> but I'm thinking about this like, OK, so what practically Mm -hmm. can we all of us who are listening to this right now because if you're under the sound of my voice Mm -hmm. you're evaluating yourself right now Mm -hmm. hardcore Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. there's a lot Mm -hmm. of stuff going Mm -hmm. what are Mm -hmm. some practical changes we can make in those moments because for some of us Mm -hmm. maybe we feel like we're doing okay you know what i mean but then you think Mm -hmm. about it it's like oh okay well maybe maybe i do need to to shift the way that i'm perceiving things Right. What is a really practical way to start to re-engineer the mm-hmm. way that we talk to ourselves on a daily basis? Is there awesome. a formula for that or yeah. a certain books or quotes that okay. you like? That's a phenomenal question, man. This is what I've learned. And I actually learned this through my therapist, right? So I would number one say if you have the ability don't find a friend that gives good advice right <laughs> don't don't find you know church or barber someone that just <laughs> listens right all of those people are fine right right but don't find your minister or uh, or barber or whatever the case may be go on the search for a therapist because guess what every single one of us have experience trauma and challenges that directly impact the decisions that we make and the actions that we take every day. And until we unpack some of that baggage and until we learn better ways to be able to address those challenges, we will often stay in the same place. Right? That's number one. Number two is many, most of our self-talk is either two things, right? Most of our self-talk are either complaints or they're like self-deprecation, mm. right? So self-deprecation, I'm not good enough, don't have enough. Like usually those are statements of lack, right? Right? 
or we have complaints. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. Um, you know, this always happens to me, whatever the case may be. Right. And everyone listening to my voice, you have your own kind of self-talk, but they typically kind of fit in those two kind of pods, so to speak. Right. It's either self-deprecation or, or thinking of or coming from a place of lack or you have um, complaints. Both of those have the same solution. Typically, when we complain or typically when we communicate our, our internal lack or when we communicate lack, what we're really saying is I need. Right. Because we know when we when we say things right or even like communication is both, you know, what you say and what you don't say. Right. Yeah, right. So even when we talk about when we talk to our clients about listening intentionally to their prospects or listening intentionally to um, their clients, you're listening so you can hear not only what the person is saying, but what they're not saying. Right. Yeah. So when it comes to our self-talk, what we're saying is I need or what we're saying is I don't have what we're saying is, um, you know, I lack this or what we're saying is, you know, complaining about X, Y and Z. But what we're really saying is what we need. Right. For example, I'm tired. You're not tired. You could just use some rest. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. I I require some rest or I could use some rest. It's much different from I'm tired because now I'm not identifying with being tired, but I am aware enough of my body to know that I could use some rest. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So now you're providing your body with what it needs, right? Same thing with, oh, I, I, I don't have the money. Or I can't afford that. Well, how could you afford it? Much more powerful thought process. Because our subconscious mind doesn't know the difference between the truth and the lie. And it listens to whatever we tell it. So if you tell your mind that you don't have enough rest. Or that you don't have enough energy. Or you don't have enough time. Right? Or you don't have enough money you will find yourself in situations where you continue to realize that you don't have enough of those things. Oh right? my God. Ugh. But, if it, but if you just in this moment allowed yourself to install a trigger mechanism in your head so when you do say that you don't have or you do identify I'm tired, I'm stuck, I'm exhausted, I'm mad, I'm angry. None of those are empowering things. Yeah. But when you speak about those things and it makes a trigger in your head that, oh, if I'm saying that, that means I need something. So what do I need? Yeah. Right? I need rest. I need a plan to make more money. I need a plan to de be more disciplined and focused. Right. And then once you establish what you need, then you establish how to get it. And you often don't establish how to get anything until you first establish that you require it. Bro. Oh, my God. That's so good. That's so good. Oh, my goodness. So <laughs> first of all, my mind is rearranging things as we're speaking and I just feel like shifts happening in my brain and if you're listening to this I hope you're experiencing that as well because the way that you are describing how your self-talk can improve is just such a more proactive approach that can actually facilitate more thought because the Abundant. I am statements mm -hmm. are, are are complete. I am right. tired. That's the end of that statement. That's the end of it. That's but the end of it. Yeah. Exactly. But if you I need it. more rest, 
-hmm. Now my brain can think, well, maybe you could take a nap here. You could take a nap there. You could do this. You could do that. You know, rather than being, this is the problem, the end. And then your brain Mm -hmm. just sits there. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, when you're, when you're speaking, I'm just like, oh man, because that is really, that's super helpful. Um, because we do use a lot of very negative terminology. I know I do. I don't know about any of you all who are listening to this, you know, but if you're anything like me, I always expect issues, you know, (laughs) and so much so that I feel like sometimes I have to be careful that I don't just manifest them on my own because I'm so Mm -hmm. busy expecting them. Mm Mm-hmm. And I told somebody the other day, I'm trying to build a relationship with joy. I don't know that I've ever had a relationship with just joy, just being okay, just enjoying myself. And so what you're talking about as far as how you're shifting your language makes so much more space for solutions, for joy, for activities, for understanding and awareness of yourself. Mm-hmm. That is just really, really, really profound, man. Like, mm-hmm. when did it, one, I understand you're not perfect, but I do mm-hmm. think that there have been several revelations that you have received, mm-hmm. right? That have completely just shifted the way that you act, think, mm-hmm. and behave. Mm-hmm. What would you say your favorite shift was? It was, how, that's a great question, bro. Um, hmm. <laughs> I never really thought about that, right? So I would say my my favorite experience, my favorite shift shows itself, right? Because I like we're evolving every day. We're evolving every day. So it really wouldn't even be fair to give you like a particular instance because I'm not like necessarily an instance person, more of a process person because like you said, it's the iterations, Yeah. right? Yeah. So I I would say how the, the, the thing that shows up the most for me is as a father, right? Um, being in a place where, like, bro, my children have watched me in more than one on more than one occasion be arrested and put in the back of a cop car. <laughs> more than one occasion in their lives, and they're they're ten, and they both like they have watched their dad go from legit a felon right legit (laughs) like arrested all the time like constantly i remember one time i went to south carolina to pick up my daughter on the way home i got pulled over and arrested had like had like warrants in four different (laughs) four different like not four different states but two different states four different cities right the cop was like oh yeah we got it you going today, bro? So, yeah. So, <laughs> can you join me in the back of the car, please? <laughs> right. Um, so, how it has shown up is just like that presence, that living out loud, that candid, that the the honesty with my children. Right. Like I come to my children as this as this imperfect vessel that's supposed to help them get from point A to point B in their lives, right? And I remind them that daddy is not perfect and y'all know he is because y'all seen y'all have seen him like that, right? Um, however, I am always improving. I'm not perfect, but one thing about it, you won't out improve me. You may outwork me because my goal ain't to work a whole bunch anymore. Real, but you, on, you will definitely, you will definitely not out improve me, right? You won't out improve me. I'm always, I'm always focused on progress. I'm always looking how that can improve, right? And so, I would say how my, how that transformation has shown itself the most is in my kids, right? And and in my, in my relationship with. Uh, and I believe as I continue to build confidence as a father, um, I'm a better professional. 
I'm a better business owner. Uh, I'm a better coach. I'm a better communicator. Um, I'm a better steward of my finances. Uh, I'm a better steward of my time. Uh, I'm a better steward of my words. Uh, all, all because of that, that daily action of just being aware enough to be able to tell myself the truth, tell myself the truth about myself, if that makes sense. Good, bad, and indifferent. Oh my goodness, that's so good. That's a great question. Man, um, it occurs to me, you know, and I know I gotta let you go here soon. You good, man. Um, but it occurs to me, and I hope for all of you all who are listening, I hope you are aware that what we tell ourselves and the truth about ourselves could be completely light years apart. Mm -hmm. And what we tell ourselves is not necessarily based off of truth to begin with. Mm -mm. It's just based off of the environment you grew up in. It's usually based off other people's truth. Yeah. Like we're taught, we grow up, like we don't really, like we grow up listening to what everyone else tells us about us. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And then we wonder why there's such a disconnect with what right. our internal dialogue is and who we want to be or try to right. be here. Right. Because you've listened to what 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 everyone else told told you about you. You don't really most of us don't have the benefit of really starting to take inventory of ourselves until we're like in our mid twenties, early thirties. Or later. Or later, when we really start, okay, I'm tired of what everybody else said. I'm gonna start. I, I'm gonna start like assessing who I really am and build this relationship with me, right? And that, that is that's pivotal. That's pivotal. Imagine, imagine you. Imagine having something. Imagine having a possession and not knowing how it really works, how it truly works until 20 years later. But everyone yeah. else told you how to operate it the, cor the correct way. Imagine that, Yeah. right? You weren't the first one to give you instructions on how to live Kibway's life. Oh my god. Mom goodness. did, dad did, auntie did, and it was all based on them. You know what I'm saying? All, all of the people that poured into your poured into your life and gave you like this is how you do this the right way. It's all based on them. It wasn't based on you. It wasn't based on your unique abilities. It wasn't based on your talents. It wasn't based on your character. You didn't know. You didn't even know those things about yourself. You just knew what somebody else told you about you. Yeah. And so I encourage for you listening right for everyone listening i encourage you even if you do it all the time to take some quiet time to really take inventory of you take inventory of the things that you are saying to yourself and you're communicating to yourself every day right um identify the things that are not true Identify those statements that you identify with. I'm stuck. You're not stuck. You're Kibway. Right. <laughs> right. And we were kids at the store and we asked mom, hey mom, can I get this? No, I'm broke. You're not broke. You're mom. Right? Yeah. You, But you're identifying with that. When you say it, it, everything after I is an identification statement. If I tell you I'm Andre, I'm identifying as Andre. If I say kid way, I'm a coach, I'm identifying as a coach. I'm a business strategist. I'm identifying as a business strategist. I'm pissed off. I'm identifying as somebody that's pissed off. I'm mad. I'm identifying as someone that is mad. So you're going to operate like a mad person. Right? I'm broke. You're identifying as someone broke. So you're going to have broke actions. You're going to have broke thoughts. You're going to have broke conversations. Right? 
We intentionally act in the way that we identify. It ain't no way around it. Whatever you identify with, you will act in that way. Ain't no way around it. So if you don't like where your life is, where your business is, where your relationships are, what do you need to do first? Probably identify with the thing or take inventory of the things you are identifying with. Yeah. Yeah. I can't keep a man. You'll never keep one like that, sis. <laughs> like for real. It's brothers walking around here like, nah, I'm I'm toxic. Like I'm just toxic. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks for letting okay. us know, bro. <laughs> well, if you if you toxic, then what's the use, bro? Leave people alone if you toxic, right? But also, don't expect anything. Don't don't like don't expect because toxic taints things, right? Yeah. Tox, toxicity makes other things toxic, right? So if you're to, if you identify with being toxic, you'll never have quality relationships. You'll never have a quality of life. Because that's who you identify with. Yeah. But how do you transform that? I have qualities that I don't like about myself that may, that may hinder my relationships. Right? That's more mature. Yeah. Then you look at it and you say, okay, what are those things? You identify them. Yeah. And it provides You're not a great communicator. And right? it provides space for solutions. Yeah. Again, again, because now you are work, you are conspiring with your subconscious mind. You're conspiring. You are what you are now in a partnership with your subconscious mind. When you start to when you start to identify things and then ask, how can I? How can I be a better communicator? How can I be a, a better manager of this? multi-million dollar company that I'm running. How how can I become a better leader of my team and help them to be more productive? It's impossible to not get some type of answer when you ask a question. Some type of answer. Right. May not come immediately, but it will come if you continue to ask the question. Wow. It may not come immediately. But it will if you continue to ask the question. It's facts, bro. Wow. Facts. So, um, huh, there's so much, bro. Um, I want to get a thought exercise from you, man. Um, mm-hmm. You've given us so many tips, bro. Uh, you have really helped me, and hopefully, you all the same reassess the way that we view ourselves because Mm -hmm. if we start taking an objective approach and not a negative approach to how we are speaking to ourselves um we probably won't have as much of an issue with our worthiness with feeling Mm -hmm. like we're worthy Mm -hmm. because we're constantly coming up with solutions for Mm -hmm. how we can achieve what we want and then Mm -hmm. at that point it's not even about being worthy it's about just executing the plan and mm-hmm. letting things progress. Mm-hmm. So so that that's huge. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a big step for some of us mm-hmm. um, who have been incarcerated with certain belief systems, mm-hmm. with certain self-identifiers. Um, you yourself talked about how the state labels you, you know, as being a felon or whatever. Some people are divorced. Some people have any number of different ailments physically. Some people have, you know, a lot of multiple failed businesses or, or partnerships in some way, shape, or form. And they could be traumatic, right? And they've lived in that box for a long time. How do we get out of that box? What's the first step? What What's the first declaration? they should write about themselves to invite themselves back out a question do you deserve better do you deserve better and once you determine you do then how how will you get to better 
it's not rocket science. Yeah. Right? It ain't, it, I'm not the guy. Like, it ain't, it ain't super in depth. I don't know about your neuroscience and all that. <laughs> all, all I, what, I, what I do know, though, is every question gets an answer. Right? And bettering yourself as an individual starts with, starts with, an attitude of personal inventory. Always taking inventory and always asking those questions. So if I'm in a state, because the Lord knows I've been suicidal, depressed, PTSD, on tons of medications, right? I've been, I've been in all those places. Like nothing changed in my life. And from what I've seen from hundreds of clients over the last decade or so doing this work is nothing happens until better questions are asked. Right? I've had people come and tell me like in tears telling me all these things are going wrong. Okay. Do you deserve that though? And you will be surprised at the response on the other end of the phone or on the Zoom call, usually it's silence. I've never thought about whether I deserve it or not. <laughs> right? I've never thought about it. I've just been living it. I've just been going through it. Like, we oftentimes just operate on autopilot. You know, like we got that saying, Jesus take the will. We don't take the will in our own lives. We be ready to give it to any but somebody else, right? <laughs> right. Right. Ooh, that's so true. We don't take the will in our own lives. Like, take the will, fam. Take the will. Start to ask yourself the question. Like, do I deserve this? No. Can I control this? Yes. Sometimes we can. Sometimes we can't. If we can't control it. That ain't, that ain't even your work to do, nor your battle to fight. But when you can, now the question is how? That's it, how? How do I? How do I X, Y, Z? And then you develop a plan. This is what I can do. This is how I get out of this. Now what's the plan? The plan is not a one-day plan. The plan is not a five-day plan. The plan is not a 12-week plan. The, the plan is not a six-month plan. The plan is a daily plan. A daily plan to improve in that one aspect of your life. Right? Commit, commit to what that plan is for the next year and see if your life isn't different. Revisit it after a year and see how you can elevate what you've already created and see if your life isn't different in that next year, right? It also, it all comes from inventory, awareness, making a decision on whether you deserve or not. Right. And then once you decide that you deserve something better, the question is how? And then after how is what's the plan? What's the plan? That is so good, man. Oh, my goodness. Y'all, you know, if you're just joining us, this is Andre Gaskin, uh, King of Increase, uh, affectionately called uh, a, 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 a self-development coach a adversity strategist i like that term you gotta put that somewhere bro <laughs> that's good because i feel like half the time that's most of what people need because you can have any great plan but inevitably once you get in the ring you're gonna get hit and that's where the real stuff starts mm-hmm. is after you then you didn't took a couple and like all right i don't know how many of these i can keep taking that's where the real work starts. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you ain't wanna buy that domain or something, bro. Like <laughs> it'll work on it. For sure. For sure. Oh man. Y'all, this has been so, so, so good. Um, we could sit here and talk 
for a really, really long time. Um, you could. Whenever you want to, bro, you can bring me back for volume two. We can do part two, bro. I'm listen, down. Listen, I'm with it. Because we got, we got, we got the imposter. We ain't even touched the worthy part. Yeah, yeah. I'm down. I'm down for part two, bro. Okay. Okay. I'm yeah. Yeah. Okay. Two. So, so this is what we're gonna do, y'all. Um, we're about an hour and some change in. Um, we we obviously gotta let. Uh, uh, our, our esteemed guest go because he got other things Appreciate to do as well and it's a Friday you know <laughs> y'all y'all we're recording this on a Friday it'll be released on a Monday but um if you want to give us just a couple words um you know anything you want to leave with us uh and then we'll just kind of wrap this one up but I want people to know how to reach you how to get in touch with you um yep. how to get involved with client attraction university if you're a business owner sure. and you're just like this is what I need. I got all these tools, but man, I just feel like I keep taking L's. You really want to get in touch with. I don't know a business organization and I'm blessed, right? But I really just don't know anybody in this game right now that has created such accessible strategies and, and formats on how to get where you're going you know some of the deals and i'll just be transparent some of the things that are happening in my life you know i just signed a really uh a really awesome uh, uh opportunity with with an organization out in colorado and someone to be moving um but that came as a result of following coaching that came as a result of of, of following a plan of how do i right and within a year of leaving a previous job i'm making twice as much and moving to an incredible place where I get to see beautiful things every single day right in my industry, right in my backyard. So I'm a, I'm a living testament that this is not fluff. This is real. And so um, I want you all to encounter and follow and engage with Andre. And uh, yeah, tell us, tell us how to, how to do that, bro. For sure. So um, you can definitely hit me up on Instagram. I spend a lot of time on Instagram. So you can hit me up on Instagram, Andre, A-U-N-D-R-A-E, V as in victory, Gaskin. So Andre, V, Gaskin on Instagram. Uh, you can definitely hit me up, hit me with a follow, hit me in the DMs, let me know. Um, you rocking with me and I, I definitely um, lock in with you. And then if you're a business owner, if you're someone um, that is in a, uh, you know, coach, consultant, service provider, uh, an expert, someone that has a level of expertise, operates in that expertise on a daily basis and want to figure out how to get more clients, how to make more money in less time, definitely hit us up at CAU um, by going to www.paid, P-A-I-D, add A-D, playbook, P-L-A-Y-B-O-O-K.com, paid at playbook.com. That's amazing. All of this stuff will be in the show notes as well for you all. Um, so, you know, just go ahead and click the link while you are leaving a five-star review and a rating for sure. uh, uh, and let us know what you think. Um, we're gonna we're gonna close this one, but this is gonna have to be just part one because yes, yeah, I got you, bro. We down. Bro, I'm down. We locked is, in. This you just good. let me know. This is good. Good. So, um, yeah. thank you, Andre, so 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 much to Appreciate all of you all who are listening. You know, be blessed and 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 start to take some inventory on on what is next for you. Right? Uh, how? Not don't proclaim things over yourself, but ask how. Do you get what you need? Um, so, 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 so good. Listen, I will talk to y'all soon in another episode. I cannot wait uh, to get back with y'all. I'll talk to y'all later. Peace. Thanks for listening to Empower You Podcast. Don't forget to rate and review this episode because we would love to hear your takeaways from this discussion. And it helps us reach more listeners just like you. If you'd like daily audio video clips from the podcast, you can find Empower You Podcast on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Thanks for listening. I'll talk to you soon.